All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Dr. Stone, Season 1, Episode 16. Okay. Ruri is cured. We did it. Like, mm -hmm. this is, like, yep. Senku, like, Chrome, like, Kohaku, y'all did won. it. Science won. Science has won. Mm -hmm. And even when, like, things got dicey, like, they, they yep. still made it work. Like, it, mm -hmm. this is a really big step. The scientific roadmap is finished. We yeah. completed it. Mm -hmm. The the whole situation with Ruri is resolved for the most part. Yep. Um, she's going to have a new life now. This is mm -hmm. going to change a lot of things for our, our cast of characters here. But we were given also the new plot hook. Indeed. Rather quickly. Something that we had kind of come to suspect already. Yep. But uh, she knows about Senku's last name, which means probably Senku's dad. Senku's dad, yes. Mm -hmm. And... This being something where it would be a very natural segue in terms of the story to be like, well, we're still going to try and advance civilization as a whole, mm -hmm. but it's going to be primarily now maybe with the goal of finding out, wait, what, what happened? happened in the past? Yeah. yeah. We need to learn more about that. We need to have mm -hmm. Ruri sit down and tell us what she knows yep. or what's been kind of passed on to her. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, that will guide a lot of things moving forward. Now we still have to deal with, you know, this fact that Sukasa is out there. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a problem. But Asagir again got his cola, so he is fully and 100% uh, on board mm -hmm. with what everybody's doing. Yes. And Senku is now the chief mm -hmm. of the Ishigami village. Yep. Um, Recently divorced. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Keep that true. simple. You know. Right, right. But that's uh, that's something where now we'll all have everyone working together and a lot of the prospects and the endeavors that he'll put into, you know, into the process to have happen here can actually be done a lot quicker because yep. he has now more... Uh, more people, more people to, to pump the on. air into the furnace. Shall yes, we say. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below and then come back here for the discussion. Okay. Oh, my God, this changes All right. everything. Just a little. This is this is now, incredible, incredible flashback because uh -huh. it's it's setting up the world building stuff of the mm -hmm. premise of this whole show. Yep. But it's also an incredibly powerful emotional tool to drive us to connecting and mm -hmm. and being there in the yep. conflict with uh, Ishigami uh, and Byakuya, yeah, the, yeah. the father. Yeah, and it's also a fantastic way to have the, the village exist without some of the inherent problems that you would have with something like that. Of You'd need two people to get unpetrified at the same time, man and woman. You need to find each other and all that stuff. You know, if they did get unpetrified, how would they not, like, you know, they would need to make sure that you, they didn't figure out how to do it for other people and then re replicate the process, you know, right. things like that. How do you make it so it's not like a stagnant gene pool? Yep. You know, all that stuff. All kinds of there stuff. There you go, right? Yes. Dr. Yep. Stone is about to go, like, all the way yep. into it yep. and be like, oh, we we thought. Yeah. We, yeah. we knew what we were doing. You got the, six guys, there are six people, three guys, three girls they're in space so you know they're safe they're also i just mm -hmm. they're also from very different areas and yes. strains mm -hmm. of dna yep. human mm -hmm. kind yep. of you and, know gene pool and stuff so when they're all yeah. quite smart so they would be able to actually survive yes because that's one of the other things like and and oh and by the way they have the supplies because if they go back to Earth, yep. like, say, with the space station or whatever, they could take the food and things like that that they had, yep. take it down with them, so that, that way until they figure out how right. to be self-sustaining, yeah. they've got that, right? They, they so, are also, just by the nature of them being in a space station, they are in one of the most dangerous places human beings have ever explored, mm -hmm. ever been yep. in. Yep. So the idea of them going to a Stone Age mm -hmm. Earth is actually not too bad. Right. Because uh -huh. in some ways it's rather easy. There's a lot of other supplies and things that they can forage mm -hmm. from the current time because there's no threat oh, yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like they can go down there and like, you know, eventually like generators and things like that will shut off and, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But until then, they can get plenty of things that they would need. Right. Yeah. Now, here's the part where things get a little crazy. Mm-hmm. 3,700 years have passed since this uh -huh. point. Yeah. 3,700 yeah. years! So, yeah, uh-huh. One of the... so That's... A few, <laughs> a few things come oh to my mind God. at that. Just... Well, because, okay, uh... one of the other things that's very important here is that there's no time delay. 
Originally, uh, I thought it was something where somehow Senku's father got unpetrified. Maybe he right. found someone else that had been unpetrified, right. and that's how the village started. Yep. Because once you have that, you can fully wipe away everything from the previous world and then start from scratch. Right. Here, they're going back, and everything will still be there. Mm -hmm. So the where the village is now... Yeah. Something happened between then other than just the petrification of the human race. Right. Yeah. Because otherwise, they'd be able to do pretty well. Like, yeah. like you and, know, it'd still be tough and everything, but, mm -hmm. you know, they've got hospitals fully stocked on medical supplies, and, like, two of them were doctors, and, like, yeah. you know, all of this stuff so that they can... They can do a lot. Right. So so here's here's where things get a little crazy. Mm -hmm. They have six very different people here. Yes. Where do they land? Mm -hmm. Like, let's think about this from a rational perspective of what would six specialists yeah. do from different places, countries, ideologies mm -hmm. and stuff. They can't do this from the standpoint of, I want to go see my boy Senku. Right. They have to think about this as, we are potentially the last mm -hmm. remnants of humanity. We need to save the human race. What is the best place to go in order to do that? Yeah. Probably where this whole thing started. Which means... Sure. Like, let's think about I mean, this here. If you genesis all over humanity uh -huh. from a different point, because a lot of people presume that potentially the first humans came from Africa... Um, somewhere in that specific area there. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different origin stories for mm -hmm. In the for whole humanity. Pangea continents exactly. splitting up and whatnot. Yeah, so mm -hmm. with this, they would have to take their craft and in some ways just take wherever they land also as just this is where we're landing because they don't yeah. have NASA or any other command right. station can't to take communicate off with. Yeah. Well, well, no, they probably could go back to Earth, but my point is, is that they couldn't be guided back to a specific point in Earth. I mean, the instruments that they have would be pretty, pretty crazy. Like, yes. I think they'd be able to get pretty close. To but, but the mm -hmm. Earth is spinning. The Earth has, you know, yeah, all but they're kinds in orbit and all that stuff. Like, like the, you know, their their instruments can account for that stuff. Like, I okay. I, I'm just going to throw out there as a prediction mm -hmm. that they're going to be extremely smart, but they're going to have to, in some ways, up the percentages of success in ways that make there be less chance of total failure. Not sure. chance of total success, mm -hmm. but they just avoid total failure, which means they have to re-enter properly. Yeah. They have to, you know, mm -hmm. re-enter in such a way that they actually can land without assistance. Which right. that's well, not yeah. necessarily a thing. Like like we're going on an assumption here that they still have a craft that's docked with the International Space Station that mm -hmm. they can take and re-enter with. And if not land without all dying. Right, right, yeah. exactly. You know. And and if they have that, great. That solves a ton of issues, yep. right? If they yep. don't have that, they have to figure out a way to get the International Space Station to go back to Earth without you know, exploding and all that stuff, melting right. and everything. So yep. the the other thing I wanted to bring up with the whole re-entry mm -hmm. thing is that they might not be able to take everyone back because certain things with regards to the weight of the craft and how things are set up, there was oh. a number of people that came in here in that craft that weren't all the six people here. Although it prop yes, although it probably would be easier to go down than up with a different number of people. No, but they yeah. can't go back up. That's no, 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 I know. I'm, yeah. I'm saying, yeah, the, the issue that, like, if it can only handle some number of people for, for going up, it, they, it, they might be able to flex those numbers a bit going down yes. since it's just gravity, you know. I, I, I agree, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying but that yes, based that on the size something. of the craft mm -hmm. and based on the safety aspects of reentry, sure. there might only be a limited number of seats that would be to pretty belt dark. themselves in. Sure, yeah. Or, or, or like the the... You know, because usually, like, they'll have, like, parachutes and things like that that deploy once you get actually into atmosphere to help right. slow you down, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the amount of force that those can, you know, give, it it will only, like, slow it down enough for, like, certain, you know, weight right. limits and, like, right. will they need to land in the water in order to make sure that it's an actual safe landing? And then that would need to probably be a lot more precise and, you know, you know who that's knows? My, that's my point, yeah, is that mm -hmm. in some ways... um. You know in those video games where you have a targeting reticle that's constantly zooming in and out? Uh -huh. And you need to time it and stop at the targeting reticle where it's still really small? There's still that tiny little bit of where it's like, you're not a point, you're a small circle instead of a huge circle. Right. They need to throw themselves essentially onto a spinning ball mm -hmm. and go, we're going to hit that area. So they generally are going to be looking at areas where they're like... uh in the middle of a large landmass. That's just my guess. Sure. And that means 
in a lot of ways. Japan is completely off the books. Japan is like one of the worst places then to go pack then because it is in an island. It is near one of the largest bodies of water. Yeah. No, the largest body of water on the planet. Right. It just if is anything, a bad idea. If anything, I could see them wanting to aim for a densely populated area because that would be the most likely to have more supplies. You right. Know, where it's like, okay, we can, if we, if we go into some, you know, like super metropolis city or something like that, it will have enough imported goods and, you know, and things like that, that we can find whatever we need to without, yeah. you know, traveling on foot too far or whatever. Right. But that means basically a couple things. Mm -hmm. One, there might be other settlements of humanity out there other than Senku's uh, Ishigami village. There's also another thing to bring up in that Ishigami village is the name probably because it's in Japan. But if uh -huh. they all go out together, why is it named Ishigami village and not some combination of all the astronauts' oh, names? Yeah. And, I mean, and that, why, does the group split up? Yeah, well, and why are there not more of them? And when they, mm -hmm. and when they brought up the idea of outsiders, mm -hmm. that means that either other yep. people other people unpetrified. Well, yeah, we since, already know that's a thing. Well, well, but since that wasn't what it was for Ishigami Village, right. that means that it's a lot less likely to just be an, a casually accepted thing, right? Yes. So there is a possibility of a schism within the village over the 3,700 years, whether at the start or something else or who knows. Oh, right? they've already set it up, I think, in the beginning. Oh, yeah? Um, let's go over a little bit of the episode here because there's a lot of things that they just kind of gave us. And it's like... This is really useful info for kind of extrapolating out over the 3,700 years. Mm -hmm. And the main one is they kind of gave us a little characterization for the astronauts. Oh, that was another thing that was uh, rather interesting here. The way they closed on the village here uh -huh. and showed the, uh, the, the star kind of symbol there. Mm -hmm. um, potentially something that's pointing at maybe a clue as to you know certain mm -hmm. bits of info like maybe there's some recorded data of the event from the international space station sure so the goal yeah. is going uh -huh. to be we need to become astronauts and go to space and figure out you know, right or, or find where they stowed like not that the technology would last 3700 years but maybe like they would have some way to yeah no because 3700 years 3700 years is a long ass time well, that's why i think in some ways there's definitely going to be someone that stayed here and their whole job was to basically die save as much as they can, turn everything off, and then just wait. And just hope that it maintains a stable orbit around the Earth. Oh, and it, eventually... it, would, it would totally, I like, would okay, say. Okay. It would totally maintain a stable All right. orbit. All right, yeah, well, and that is... And in space, I guess you wouldn't have a lot of the regular issues of decay. No, not things as much, like that. really. Like, because it wouldn't have, you know, moisture and things like that because you're in space. But but 3,700 years is a long time. You're and, right. and, 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 yeah, but, but, okay... But if it is that, if it is that, yeah. and then the final thing is, because that would be a very natural conclusion for sort of the end of, all right, fully catching up to where we were, like mm -hmm. where humanity was technologically before this happened, is we need to figure out how to get to space and get to the International Space Station. Right. That would be a very, like, iconic kind of moment. ending moment for, like, this is where we can figure it all out. And it might you know? not even be the end. It's just them realizing, okay, that's where it happened. That's what kind sure. of a thing it looked like. Mm -hmm. Now we need to go back. Yeah. And we'll solve things from there. So so let's yeah. go over these characters here. Mm -hmm. We have basically the diva, you know, mm -hmm. uh, singer, kind of the Kohaku Ruri, yep. you know, she original. She is definitely their progenitor. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, you can definitely see that um, her, her uh, was it her husband, boyfriend, this, uh, this other guy that came with them, Shamil? Let's let's go back to the original point um, and where they all entered. Um, where they all entered the, uh, the space station. So you end up having them getting sent off on the rocket there, and that mm -hmm. rocket is necessary in order to get them up there. So that's right. why they'll probably never go. Yeah, they they there just be go, no way. No, never go back now that they've mm -hmm. uh, you know come here. But that's there. That's the remaining. Yeah. See, look at look at how cramped it is in here. This is just the three of them coming up. Yeah. So they dock successfully. These three are already here. Mm hmm So, no, so... Okay, so... So, so Shamil and... Uh, um, so Shamil is not necessarily related yeah. or... Uh-huh. Or anything with, uh, with Lillian. Lillian. Yeah. However, 
Lillian in some ways does seem to have a little bit of potentially a little bit of a, mm -hmm, you know, with, uh, Oh, with uh, uh, Biakia. Biakia yeah. yeah. Well, and also, even though even though it was backtracked on it, the whole diva thing, and, you yes. know, oh, don't you know who I am? That was a joke that they shared between each other. Well, that was the joke that they shared between each other, but it was also something where we got one of the other ladies to say, if it had gone on for another minute, I would have killed them. Uh-huh, yes. Like, that's that's something where it's like, ha, ha, ha. Good and then joke. It's like, good joke. And then it's like, wait, the six of us need to restart the human race. Right. Oh, God. Like, that that could potentially take on more meaning. Like, it, it could be foreshadowing or something or other. Or it's just but, the issue that... It is hard for people to work together when they are put in extreme stress. Uh huh. Yep. It is. Yep. It is very difficult. Exactly. Yeah. But then there's also the added bit of where uh, Lillian and Biakia are enjoying the joke, but then Shamil is not necessarily as uh, not necessarily as enjoying the joke. But there is some aspect of it where it's not necessarily that they're gonna, you know, make babies or something together. Or I mean, I'm pretty you. sure all of them are going to make babies with anyone that they can <laughs> over the course of their lifetime, just because gene pool diversity, we have to keep that up. <laughs> Jacob's like, like, all right, now orgy, commence, go. Like, I mean, they might space it out a few years just to sort of, you know, mentally adjust kind oh my of, God, I don't know, but like, Let's let's go into actually the character dynamics though mm -hmm. a little bit more here. Right. We're getting to realize that there is there is quite a bit of difference between them. Mm -hmm. And while there is already a married couple here, yeah. there is a lot of potential for group dynamics to form yes. in between the group of six. Right. Mm -hmm. So seeing how that uh gets kind of figured out means that one, there is no natural leader of these six here. If you look at them, when you think about yeah, them all kind of having a unified vision, you would think on some level that it would be someone maybe like Yaakov, for instance, who would be like, okay, I'm the veteran here. I've been here the longest, you know, I've, or I've, I've, I've kind of got the the sure. gist of things here. But he's also the soft-spoken one, and Biakia is the one that's like, all right, we're going to save them, so maybe, he's, maybe he ends up being like, the leader. Sure. Sort of stepping up in that way, they're going to be like, all right, yeah, if you have a plan, like, let's let's do it, you know. Right, but there's there's all kinds of potential selfishness and little things that can come about and make it sure. you know, really difficult. And so the, I want to see, was that really Sukasa? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that was oh, totally, totally Sukasa. Sukasa. So wait, yeah. and then that means that could have been Taiju, too. It might have been, yeah. I mean, well, We'll see, I guess. It doesn't really but, matter. But. but the thing is, is that they can, the show can do as much or as little as it wants with this story here, right? Yeah. With this mini story. Because we know how it ends. We know that there's 3,700 years in between here and now. So oh. they have the biggest blank slate possible. I forgot. Shamil has no family. That's ah, right. That's right. That's right. So in that sense that, okay, so, so if we go by that logic, if Shamil has no family, the other two are married right mm -hmm. there's less plate there's less places that they might necessarily have a a desire beyond just the the practical to go back that's to that's true so yeah. maybe that's part of the laying the foundation for why they go back to japan or at least somewhere near japan because yeah. i'm guessing i'm like because just sailing to japan would be ridiculous after landing like you just wouldn't Oh like, god this is something interesting about senku's studying of the swallow populations and stuff uh-huh you just completely omits North America and South America. They're just not shown on this little paint image he made here. Look at that. Oh. It's literally only Europe and uh, Asia. Sure. And then it's showing a purple bit over... Uh, yeah, Australia and that area. Indonesia. And Southeast Asia. But, Southeast Asia, yeah. And then Africa is also grayed out, so... Yeah, maybe... Well, it, maybe I think that's because there's no swallows over there. That's the point. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. Right. So these are the incidents, and then based on the density, I guess, of swallow populations or what have you, mm -hmm. it correlates you get, pretty strongly. It correlates pretty strongly, right? But there's nothing showing for North America, yeah, yeah, or and, South America, right? And there right. are definitely, and, it, and it's well, well, actually, are there swallows in North America? I'm gonna, that's a good I'm question. freaking Google this. But and well, and one of the either way, it's something where it's not showing America to not be, you know, covered or whatever. Um, uh huh. Leave it to Dr. Stone to, to make us North. wonder, are swallows in North America? Like, are they native? Yeah, because yeah. they wouldn't have any reason to go east or west. That's not a necessary thing for 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 birds. Uh, what, what do you mean? African or European swallow? It is one of the barn swallow is the most abundant and widely spread swallow species in the world. It breeds through the northern hemisphere and winters much in the southern hemisphere. 
Barn swallows once nested in caves throughout North America, but now their nests almost exclusively on human-made structures. Oh, okay. okay so, so they, so they North are America. there. <laughs> but but yeah, that is a good point. That although although if if it was if swallows are native to North America, or at least barn swallows are, and Senku was doing the whole thing with the swallow population, and he noticed that North America didn't have any, that would probably be kind oh, of odd. Oh, interesting. This might be a little bit of something where it ties in a little bit to the real world. There oh, is really? a current decline and a fast decline specifically in North America really? regarding the swallow population. Huh. Whoa. Really? Oh, maybe I'm going to stop Googling here and just, well, just in case. No, you know? no that, that could totally have been an article talking about the swallow population in North America specifically. Like, not necessarily related to other, you know, continents no, and stuff. No, it, it, is, oh, yeah? it is specifically saying that the swallow population is decreasing based on the ecological impact of oh, certain man. environments. And well, North America is specifically one that, that has had the biggest impact but that but regard. regardless since that was kind of the, the swallows were Ooh. a test the fact that the because they got they got a the a, swallows were the first incident to show some kind right. of proof that something bad was happening exactly or going to happen right but but they saw it from space that's a big deal right yeah. because no one else would get that kind of perspective no and yeah. not only was there the green field there was also that like yellow ball Amidst that, it basically looked like an energy blast of pollen. Like if if you kind yeah, of think about yeah, it, like uh -huh. it had almost like a, like maybe it's just because I played near 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 automata recently, but it had almost a script kind of look to it and stuff. That I was okay. like, hmm, wait a minute, yeah. how how weird sci-fi are we gonna go here? You know, but but it did seem to be coming from above South America, aka North America. N north north of South America, yeah, there was a very clear shot that we got to see. South America, Argentina, Chile, the Andes Mountains, and a little bit of the Amazon rainforest. So that means that, yes, it is somewhere north, but because the globe is yeah. not really as big, if you will, from space in terms of how it looks, that could have been all the way on the other side of the planet, That's for true. all we know. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which would be, I guess... Somewhere yeah, it'd, be, it'd, be really, it'd be really tough to identify. Eastern yeah, it could, have, yeah it could have been yeah. come from the North Pole, for all we know, yeah. too. Uh -huh. But um, it's not South America. At the very right. least. That, yeah. <laughs> we know That's that. one down. <laughs> one down. And it's not Antarctica. <laughs> like, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Two so, down, five more to go. <laughs> right. Um, or it's not, uh, maybe it's not Africa or something because that would be east of South America. Right. Yeah. But, Probably not Australia but, either. But like there's so yeah. many things we could get into here. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I, I just uh -huh. got to say uh -huh. there's, there's a father-son relationship that was built in this episode that was attached to the backstory that we saw in the very beginning of the show yep. but it's developed even more because we realized those things that senku were, was doing mm -hmm. was because his father gave him the opportunity to yeah. go into science so much but mm -hmm. it was because his father was also someone that was passionate yep. about science and i gotta say i gotta say now i know that this isn't being done for the sake of the trope but because it follows the trope i'm going to point out how it does it really well okay the absent father uh -huh. that has some connection to the grand plot thing that's affecting the world and all that stuff, yep. you know, the, the grander conflict, yep. and then leaving something behind for the son to move on and, and sort of carry on the torch, right? Right. Mm -hmm. As for, you know, it, it matches it very well, but then as for why it happens, it's grounded very well into the character's motivations. Yep. Because, one, the fact that the father is absent is was not his choice. Nope. Two, the father went and did this thing on behalf of the son in a lot of ways because Senku helped give him that extra push. Yep. Even though he also wanted to be the astronaut, he did everything to make sure that his dad could be, and then he went to space, and then it happened. As far as the reasoning of, of why, if anybody were to be spared from it's this, it would random be... And con it's random convenience. Exactly, yeah. right. It had nothing to do with the dad actually having something to do with what happened. Right. It's just that he was in space. Like, like yeah. okay, you know... The only way someone really could have survived this incident... Is in, if they were a part of it or off the planet. Well, like, right, they were somehow immune to mm -hmm. the blast right. radius or what have you, which is totally plausible. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, anyone yeah. that didn't know it was happening mm -hmm. basically would have had to be out in space. Which, one, there you yep. go. One Astronauts. of the other reasons why I love the idea of... Um, of this happening now now granted because of the checks that they were doing from space and the internet and things like that odds are it was the whole world over but one of the things yeah. i was wondering about is uh -huh. if it did come from somewhere like north america north america is across a big old ocean from japan right uh -huh. what if it was something where say most of the world was taken out but then the people that were a part of this were like hey we basically just 
you know, assuming this was a man-made thing. Assuming this was a man-made thing, they basically right. hit a reset button, and then they, if they were immune, if they made themselves immune from the beginning, would be able to, over the course of 3,700 years, they wouldn't get, they wouldn't completely take it back to, you know, where it was, but they would be able to do a lot without necessarily, even if people did wake up, having any clue what was going on because yeah. it's on the other side of the world. Yeah. Thematically, though, the more and more I get kind of the themes of this show, mm -hmm. the more and more I think it's not a man-made thing. Mm, because it's more about just... Because yes. this is a man versus the environment Yeah, man versus story. nature kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh -huh. when you think about um, the line that I, I think is so poignant and perfect for the whole show oh, uh -huh. uh, that Lillian gave, yeah. which was... Well, let me just bring it up again. It was like, I, I want... want yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're echoing each other here. Uh -huh. This is hilarious. Um, <laughs> so loud, my eardrums pop. You really like singing. And she tells us a story about mm -hmm. you know when she started singing for herself. I want all kinds of people from all around the world to hear me sing. It make if it makes people appreciate the world and feel glad they were born. That would make me so happy. Yep. Now there's a very simple you know wholesome good kind of mm -hmm. desire here for her to make other people just feel happy yeah but if you think about cool. the makes people appreciate the world and feel glad they were born i'm going to add the makes people feel glad they were born in this world uh -huh. as a repetitive thing to make right. people draw the connection additional of, emphasis yeah right that dr stone is a show makes this world feel magical mm -hmm. it makes this yep. world feel so much more alive because right. it's our world. Because it's yeah. th there, there is a fantasy element in some ways of the event. But everything else after that, after you kind of get over the, the petrification stuff there, mm -hmm. is our science. This is our exploration of how the yep. world's systems work. Mm -hmm. So it makes you, the viewer, appreciate this world that much right. more. So this is almost a fourth wall breaking kind of little mm -hmm. thing of... If this I can make a story, yeah, yeah, this is what the show's about. If I can make people appreciate the world and feel glad they were born in this world, then that makes me happy. Exactly. And, that's, and he's literally looking into a mirror almost of sorts, so well, it's like looking yeah. back at us. You and know? and it's also the artist that oh, yeah. sang this, you yeah. know? So, yeah, if my art can do this, like, you know, there you, there go. you go. There you go. Um, so, good stuff. We yeah. have... Um, we have an idea about the event being a localized explosion of some kind of thing. Yep. Um, it's mm -hmm. a combination of an actual physical thing that they could all see and some kind of wave of energy or signal or something, something. that went off from that. I do find it rather interesting that the, uh, the difference in time between certain things like the the the, the swallows being something that Senku mm -hmm. was studying, being like, oh, this is rather interesting, means that like Senku doesn't have some kind of special clearance access or something like that. Meaning like mm -hmm. Senku wasn't the only one probably looking at the swallows and being like, this is weird. Right. Uh -huh. It's more like Senku probably, if anything, read some articles mm -hmm. and was like, this is very peculiar. Yeah. And I like strange, weird things, so I'm going to look at this. Mm -hmm. One thing, yeah. One thing that I think is interesting here is that, given the fact that they were okay on the International Space Station, mm -hmm. because it's that that suggests that it was something that was spread through the atmosphere. Because the International Space Station, while it's far up, it's probably not as far as some as the opposite side of the world would be. Mm -hmm. You know, of course. Yeah. I mean, I don't know myself, but. Um, but if it, but that means that it didn't reach them probably because of the vacuum of space and things like that. Because I'm, I'm sure there could have been other people in like hermetically sealed chambers at the time, you know, like, and would they have gotten like, right, you know, affected by it too? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's probably not something that went through the air. I'm just gonna throw the idea out here that if we're going to science the event mm -hmm. and explain it as a specific thing, the thing that makes the most sense to me is some kind of frequency, some kind of specific um, wave of, yeah, a frequency. Because in some ways it matches a little bit the tones, the themes of the singing. The singing is sending oh, out uh -huh. a frequency. I'm going to have my voice kind of go out and spread throughout the world. This is something where it's a nature's frequency or what have you being like nope we're going to wipe the slate clean uh -huh. and start over and 
and they don't necessarily have to go into the science of the actual yeah, event because that is the one sort of sci-fi element of it that generates the premise so right you know you can just kind of go with it right um but and and i guess what we'll we'll find out pretty soon here what kind of take they want to do because if it's something where it's we have to save the human race versus yeah. And, and we do that in one way versus we do that by finding out how this happened. Like yeah. if they go in an investigation of this event, then that's probably going to be something that's going to be explored a lot more, not just here, but in Senku's time. Mm -hmm. um, but time. They have to be practical here. Yeah. They only have so much time. And yet from their perspective there, they don't know that this is a permanent thing. So there's mistakes that can be made sure. here in terms of wasting time mm -hmm. that could lead to the group in some ways falling apart, splitting up, mm -hmm. having a situation where maybe only, only the married couple is the ones that actually end up, you know, right. having a line of descendants basically. Mm -hmm. But let's assume that at the very least Lillian and, uh, Byakia end up making it to Japan. At the very least, their descendants do. Sure. 3,700 years. Mm -hmm. That is... It's a long-ass time. That is a long-ass time. Yeah, I'm and, almost surprised that there aren't more people in Ishigami Village. Well, that's the thing. Like, we know there were more. Uh, yes, There right. were outsiders yep. that they interacted with right. at some point. And, and that's one of the great things, is that the conflict that happens within them doesn't have to be in this current generation. Yes. It almost, like, like, yes, it could definitely happen, but it would make way more sense for it to be something that happens 10, 10, 20, now. 15, yeah. you know, generations down the road. Right. And then when, when this has more or less been forgotten about. Yeah. Yeah. God. Okay. Wow. Um... Here we are. Mm -hmm. We now know, in some ways, a truth, a truth or the truth about some ways in which the human race started to reboot itself mm -hmm. through these six people. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm excited for the possibility of other humans out there, other mm -hmm. villages, other little pockets of humanity that were started from these six, because sure. someone eventually found out the way to uh actually like uh unpetrify that had to happen i mean that's how the village was started there's there's no way the village Ishigami yeah village? Ishigami village yeah no nah, there's there's three guys three girls you know you think they would last 3700 years without all kinds of birth defects and stuff i think so since they're really? since they're from different countries and things like that yeah i think so at least, at least where the birth defects would be, would be enough of an outlier that it wouldn't affect the village as a whole. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. Like, like that where, where, you know, there might be some, some occasional issues, but by that point it's so survival of the fittest kind of a thing that they would just end up dying off. I remember a study and I remember I, I actually like looked into oh, yeah? this because of the show Battlestar Galactica oh. and they were saying how many people is, it doesn't matter how varied the gene pool is because oh, yeah. eventually it all becomes incestuous basically right right is that you need a certain number of people to last in perpetuity and six is way less than what the study was basically bringing up oh yeah, yeah. like it doesn't matter how varied the the gene <sighs> pool is so well yeah i mean i guess maybe they would and and it could also bring up the idea of you know if they do explore it of how it spread worse is it potential that certain very isolated, like hyper isolated pockets of people would have survived. Been, would have survived. Like if there were some cute girls in Antarctica for some reason, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe it wouldn't have spread over there, right? Like oh my you god. Know, like who knows? What a reference. Beautiful. But, um yeah. We'll just have to find out in the next episode. So y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full length timer reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access. So you can chat with us and the community there about this show, about anime in general. And you can also talk with Jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote. Yep. Wrote a sci-fi novel. It's called Battle Lines. It's super awesome. And it's on Amazon for purchase. Link in the description down below. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.